there's kind of a kind of a, a darker side to prenatal Pilates, and that darker side has to really do with fear. Fear of women practicing or exercising during their pregnancy, and fear of Pilates professionals and kind of how they're comfortable, um, if they feel comfortable, their comfort level rather, with working with pregnant women. And so with this fear, because we kind of hear about what we can't do, what we shouldn't do, because it's not safe for the mom or it's not safe for the baby. So we have this question of what exercises should be avoided during pregnancy? And this is a really fantastic question and a really a big question, so I'm just gonna try to be really concise here with you. And the first thing is, is there's definitely some general guidelines that we go by as a pregnancy progresses of things that we wanna be aware of. Um, and this completely just depends on the opinion, I'm gonna be very frank with you, the opinion of the professional, and also the comfort level and the desires of the client as well, and there has to be a meshing of those. So there are some guidelines, and we kind of know some of these, like, you know, you can't lie on your back after 20 weeks of pregnancy because it will potentially disrupt the blood flow to the baby. Or we shouldn't be doing inversions where our hips are up higher than our shoulders, again, because it can kind of compromise some of the circulation and some of the blood flow and some of the positioning of the baby. There's some, there's some general guidelines that we have. We shouldn't lie prone, which means we shouldn't lie on our belly, and that's for obvious reasons. So there's some, there's some guidelines that we go by, but we have to kind of look at these guidelines a little bit deeper. Um, balance is another one that a pregnant woman shouldn't do any exercises that require balance. So you know, maybe no single leg work or unilateral work where we work one side and then the other because of the instability of the pelvis. So we kind of have to look at some of these guidelines and make educated and confident decisions based off of them. So big, in my opinion, professionally and personally, I've seen women who have chosen to ex nay exercises very early into their pregnancy because of their certain circumstance and other women who've chosen to do them all the way up until the very end because of their circumstances. And we can see this with um, you know, women that do headstands and handstands, that practice yoga all during their pregnancy. We can see a lot of different wonderful things that women do that they shouldn't be doing during their pregnancy, but their bodies are prepared and happy and healthy for them. So exercises that you should avoid are going to be exercises that don't feel right for you. And this could mean a lot of different things. So if you do not feel comfortable, safe, if you have internally a little red flag that goes up, then that's your body or your intuition telling you to back off and to take a step back and to try a different thing. So let's take supine, for example, lying straight on your back. When your belly starts to get bigger, the pressure of the baby starts to push down on some of the veins and arteries that run through your torso. And the reason we have concern for that, like I said earlier, is that it can compromise the blood flow to the baby. Now, honestly, you are gonna feel uncomfortable, short of breath, it may be even dizzy way before it affects the baby. So if that doesn't feel good for you, you could be 17 weeks pregnant, or you could be 36 weeks pregnant. It, where your timing is gonna be different. What we need to look at is why you're flying supine, what exercise are you doing? So example, maybe you're doing a pelvic tilt to stretch out your back and to engage your abdominals safely. So what we need to do is get you up and in a different position where you can still achieve that same movement patterning of your pelvis and your spine and still achieve some of the same benefits. So really exercises to avoid are gonna be things that either one, you're physically not prepared to do, you don't have the strength or the stamina or the flexibility to do it, or two, exercises that just don't feel comfortable for you, and you have that little red flag that goes up. And you should be working with a professional that honors that, listens to that, and then has in their little toolkit a lot of other exercises or positions that you can get your body into that you can reap the same benefits.